Hello boys and girls, we're now uh, going to do the next couple of chapters because they're small chapters so this should be pretty quick but um, here we go, this is the cook up, George's Marvelous Medicine. Remember, don't do this at home, okay, it's only a book. In the kitchen, George put the saucepan on the stove and turned up the gas flame underneath it as high as it would go. George, oh sorry, George, came the awful voice from the next room, it's time for my medicine. Not yet, Grandma, George called back. There's still 20 minutes before 11 o'clock. What mischief are you up to in there now? Granny screeched. I hear noises. George thought it best not to answer this one. He found a long wooden spoon in a kitchen drawer and began stirring hard. The stuff in the pot got hotter and hotter. Soon, the marvellous mixture began to froth and the foam. A, blue, a rich blue smoke, the colour of peacocks rose from the surface of the liquid and a fiery fearsome smell filled the kitchen it made george chalk and splutter it was a smell unlike any he'd ever smelled before it was brutal and bewitching smell spicy and staggering fierce and frenzied full of wizardry and magic whenever he got a whiff of it up his nose firecrackers went off in his skull and electric prickles ran along the backs of his legs it was wonderful to stand there stirring this amazing mixture and to watch it smoking, blue and bubbling and frothing and foaming as though it were alive. At one point, he could have sworn he saw bright sparks flashing in the swirling foam. And suddenly, George found himself dancing around the steaming pot, chanting strange words that came into his head out of nowhere. Fiery broth and witches brew, foamy throth and riches blue. Fume and spume and spoon drift spray. Fizzle, swizzle, shout hooray. Watch it sloshing, swashing, sploshing. Hear it hissing, squishing, spissing. Grandma better start to pray. Next chapter, brown paint. George turned off the heat underneath the saucepan. He must leave plenty of time for it to cool down. When all the steam and froth had gone away, he peered into the giant pan to see what colour the great medicine now was. It was a deep and brilliant blue. Hmm. It needs more brown in it, George said. It simply must be brown or she'll get suspicious. George ran outside and dashed into his father's tool shed where all the paints were kept. There was a row of cans on the shelf, all colours, black, green, red, pink, white, and of course, brown. He reached for the can of brown. The label said simply, dark brown gloss paint, one quart. He took a screwdriver and prized off the lid. The can was three quarters full. He rushed it back to the kitchen. The saucepan was now full, in, full to the brim after he poured the whole lot into it. Very gently, George stirred the paint into the mixture with the long wooden spoon. Aha, it was turning brown. A lovely, rich, creamy brown. Where's that medicine of mine, boy? cried the voice from the living room. You're forgetting me. You're doing it on purpose. I shall tell your mother. I'm not forgetting you, Grandma, George called back. I'm thinking of you all the time, but there's still ten minutes to go. You're a nasty little maggot, the voice screeched back. You're a lazy and disobedient little worm, and you're growing too fast. George fetched a bottle of Grandma's real medicine from the sideboard. He took out the cork and tipped it all down the sink. Then fill the bottle up with his own magic mixture by dipping a small jug into the saucepan and using it as a pourer. He replaced the cork. Had it cooled down enough yet? Not quite. He held the bottle under the cold tap for a couple of, min couple of minutes. The label came off with the wet, but that didn't matter. He dried the bottle with a dish cloth. All was now ready. This was it. The great moment had arrived. Medicine time, Grandma, he called out. I should hope so too, came the grumpy reply. The silver tablespoon in which the medicine was always given lay ready on the kitchen sideboard. George picked it up. Holding the spoon in one hand and the bottle in the other, he advanced into the living room. 